Hey guys, so if you joined me um, for our Facebook Live on Friday afternoon, um, it is still Friday <laughs> when I'm recording this, because I made this card as part of the, the live and I absolutely love making this card. Um, but I'd originally set out wanting to make a card using the Let's Chat stamp set and I didn't do that. I used the Retro Foam Builder die set instead. So what I thought would be really cute would be to make kind of a matching set. Um, so using some of the same sort of the same colour schemes, similar products, but with the stamp set rather than the die set. And I thought I'd record record it as almost as a live. Um, and, uh, and yeah, and then you, you can have that as a watch that so that if you like, if you prefer your, your stamping and your critters to your die cutting, then you've got this as an option. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start off with a blue card base this time. So, and this is an A2 size. So we've got an A6 size using our Yorkshire Tea card stock as the base. But I'm now going to use some, um, this is a blue, um, our, our bright blue, I think it's Bluebird, um, coloured cardstock for my base. And I'm going to use some of the Yorkshire Tea cardstock um, as my first layer. And then I'm going to layer it up with another piece of patterned paper from the Horsome Rainbow patterned paper pad. It's a lot of P's. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to cut those out using my layering dies. So for the previous card, we used the A6 layering dies, but I do also have them in the A2 size. So we're going to use that to, um, to create the layers for this card. So let's cut those out first. I'm using the second largest die to cut out my Yorkshire tea colored cardstock. So a bit of Yorkshire tea up there. A little bit of fluff on that one. I'm going to cut this down a little bit as well just before I put it through my die cutting machine. So that'll be layer one and then layer two I'm going to cut from this rainbow spotty paper. So just lining that up where I want it. Bit of washi tape. Sticks to my sticks to my nails rather than the paper. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim this down as well, just so that we can pop it through my die machine all at once. So let's line these up onto my Gemini plate. So, and I'm going to keep this card here just to keep a ref as a reference. But I've also got some of this gorgeous bubblegum pink cardstock. I'm just going to see if I've got a smaller piece because I don't need all of that. Um, so I like to use my scraps. So that's a good size piece. So I'll keep hold of this larger piece for a later project. There. there. And my, my thoughts with this were I would use the um, the heart nesting dies. Um, they don't, I mean, they're not really nesting dies. I shouldn't really call them that, should I? Because they, um, they because they're little, they're chunky fat dies, they don't nest as such. But they are, um, they do obviously come down in size from each other. That made no sense, did it? So that's a lovely, it's a lovely big heart, but I think that might be too big for 
the one below might be a bit too small. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that one's a little bit too large. So I think we'll go with this one and this one. I think. Even though it's going to go slightly off the edge of the page there. Possibly too big. Which is a shame. Um, so, the idea being that we have our little characters here. The little bunny. So we've got the little bunny. With the phone. <laughs> no, I'm not going to use the phone. But I do think the bunny is really cute. So use the bunny to say. Hello. Where did my dice go? Or hi. quite cute. We've got the kind of a little miss you, hi, or we could go with the thank you or um, let's chat. But I think that's kind of cute. So I'm going to go with that and then we'll see, see how it turns out. I think that's what we're going to go with. So this again is just a little bit of an experiment. So Let's just zoom in a little bit. That's better, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I'll move my little uh, my little bunny, and then I'm going to take this die, and I'm going to pop that one on there, and then I'm going to do the same as we did with this. Um, card. I'm actually going to ink blend my cardstock to create some bespoke colour. So let's have a look. Have I got a bit of got a bit of blue here? Oh, not quite big enough, I don't think. That's a shame. Could not. Oh, could it fit on there? Perfect. Don't ever get rid of your scraps. <laughs> Don't get rid of your scraps. So let's just add a bit more ink to the corner here because we can definitely use this. So I'm just going to pop this on here and I'm going to grab, it was actually the tumble glass. Let's just grab some of the tumble glass here. And add that to the corner. Oh no, that has got something on there. Let's see. That's the corner it's going to go into, isn't it? Can we miss that? Just lovely. I think that will. You must have got a bit of glue on there or something. Um, the alternative would be let's flip it over. 
so I'm just sticking it blending onto a scrap of my blue cardstock. Some of this tumbled glass. And I'm going to ink blend the whole thing just in case I do decide to use it for something else. I might as well while I've got my brush out and loaded with ink and then this will fit some ways in this corner. There we go, just like that. I'm just going to add some washi tape. I'm going to add extra washi tape because this is very wet, as you can see, and it only needs to move a little tiny bit, and it won't um, cut perfectly. So, Number one, looking cute. And part number two did work. <laughs> and again, that looks so cute. I love that. There we go. For my sentiment, um, I think I am going to go with the blue background. So again, I've got some scraps here of blue cardstock. Use your scraps, guys. Really do because I just just hang on to your scraps. They're so useful. They really are. love the bold font of these dies as well it's really cool and I just I'm loving the retro feel of these um, colors I think they work really well with the retro builder um, die set I think it works so well now I have got this the, the this is a super large tittle for the eye so one that's not going to be as easy to lose which is but that I think is looking really, really cute. Um, so on this this one, we've got the large sentiment at the top and the sub sentiment at the bottom. We could potentially do that this way around, which I think is going to look really cute. Um, we could potentially use the sentiment that we've we've die cut previously, but I think I'm going to go with a different sentiment for this one because we're not going to. I don't think I'm going to put the phone on this one. Um, I don't know what, whether I'm going to add an accessory to the little bunny or whether I'm just going to go with the bunny on his own. Um, I am tempted to give the bunny a little um, a little balloon here with the little the mini heart, which I think would be kind of cute, wouldn't it? Hmm. That would be quite sweet. So we'll we'll hold on to that as a as an option. Um, I'm not sure about that just at the minute. What I want to do first is cover up my bunny, I think, and then we shall see whether um, he needs something else. So, I've got my bunny here. My bunny um, feels a little bit grubby. 
so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my chamois and I'm going to clean him all the way around front and back so that I know he's going to be nice and clean if you are struggling to get your um, your uh, stamps to cling again because they have got a bit mucky and um, these are this one's actually fine but if you wanted to you could use some stamp cleaner which we do sell um, in store and that's really good for getting your stamps nice and clean so that's actually pre-cut piece I'm not going to use that because that's been cut to size and might use that for something else so little bunny give him a bit of ink I'm actually using the lawn fawn um, jet black ink because it's a hybrid ink which means that it will work with your alcohol markers and um, should also work with your watercolors you do I have noticed that you do need to give it a little bit of time to dry um, because it can run a little with your alcohol markers um, so I do sometimes let it just dry up a little bit um, but we probably won't have time to do that for just now so I'm going to go straight in with some colour and I'm going to use um, some shades of brown um, the E40 shades of brown here we go 43 E So to colour my bunny I'm going to use um, the E40 shades, so I've got E40, E41, E42 and E43. I may not use all of these colours but we shall see. I'm actually going to start with my darkest colour which I don't normally do but um, I am just mixing up a little bit how I colour um, at the moment so I'm going to use this for the areas where I feel that there would be a bit of shadow so this is not really going to be necessarily the colour of my bunny this is just where I'm adding my depth so I only really want a little bit of this wherever there is an overlap or where part of that body is likely to be in shadow so at the bottom there it's probably going to be some shadow underneath his chin there's going to be a bit of shadow as well so that's really where my, my shadow is going to be and I'm going to blend that out using the E42. So I'm going over the edges of that and I'm bringing that colour further inland because this is pretty much what I would say the colour of my, my bunny is actually going to be. So bringing that colour inwards but leaving white space because that's the highlight that's the bit that's going to be the lightest with our bunny and that's what's going to give us the feel that this is a 3D image so you can see I've left the lightest bit in the middle of the face there I'm going to go for the E41 now and then the E41 going just rubbing over the edge of the last colour that I used to blend those edges out and then over these other areas to blend them together Okay. 
and what I'm finding when I do when I color in this way rather than giving everything a, a light color first I am getting a much um, paler result which I've, I'm finding that I'm really enjoying at the moment is a little bit of a paler finish so I'm going to go in with I think my um, R01 here I think I'm going to use this R30 looks pretty actually yeah I'm going to go in with so this R30 is the pale yellowish pink I'm going to use that for inside the ears and uh, for the cheeks the nose I think I'm going to go in with that darkest brown there and then just to pink up those ears a little bit I've got um, a little bit of the R01 I'm just going to add that at the very base just to pink those up and then finally for the tail I'm going to take the E40 and just add a little bit of shading around his little fluffy bunny tail so that is our little bunny completed all of these and then we can trim this bit of cardstock down. There. And um, I need my coordinating dies. So, coordinating dies are here. Get my bunny die. Got a cat sat behind me, as always. I have a little friend. Come to. Uh, See what's happening. Okay. That's too bad. And then I have got an idea to do a little balloon for this guy. I think it's going to be quite cute. So we've got him there. Okay, we've got there. And then the little the smallest heart that is in the um the those nesting hearts. And I'm thinking we're probably going to have a little sentiment and a sub sentiment that goes across there. So my little heart can go here So my thoughts were because we've got a lot going on in the background here, I didn't want to add another colour. Um, so I thought maybe some vellum might be a nice idea just to diffuse things a little bit. So I've got couple of different types of vellum. I've got this more solid looking vellum but I've also got um, more of a, a textured vellum which is kind of pretty and I did have an idea that maybe I could colour this vellum a little bit. Again just diffusing it slightly so that um, it's not so in your face um, and it might look a little bit more balloon like so I've got like I say I've got two different types here and in order to colour them um, I'm, I think I'm going to use some of my distress inks on the back um, now, colour-wise, I'm going to go with, or oh, the alternative is you could just back it with some some um, cardstock. But I'm going to I'm going to try the ink blending and see what happens. Again, you know, it's really important to to try these things. 
because you might actually find your latest favorite technique. So I'm going to use, use my stackable brushes for this. Grab my pink and I'm going to go with, an, um, uh, I think I'm going to go with the Kitsch Flamingo because it is a paler pink. Um, do I go with the dye based ink? No, I'm going to go with the oxide. And I'm doing this on the back. So, I mean, you know, you decide which, which is the back. But the, the idea being that um, when you place it on your cardstock, you won't be putting your fingers in the ink because it may not dry, the ink may not dry so well on the vellum. So it's a bit more of a slippy, slippery surface. So a bit of pink in there. And the reason I'm using the smaller, the smaller brush is that it does concentrate the colour a little bit more, which is always handy. Especially with this type of project. So you can see that it's just a very diffused colour there. It's a bit brighter on that side. So we'll, we'll cut it out. Oh, I, quite like, I think I like it more on the coloured side because this is quite thick vellum. And again, it's probably a bit too diffused. So we will cut it on the right side. And people will just not have to put their fingers in it. <laughs> so, um, little die cutting machine again. That's green. Oh, that's cute. I like that. That is very cute. And you guys can't see it, but I think it's cute. I'll show you in a second. So die cut bow. See that's moving around because obviously the ink is still wet. That's why it's good to use the smaller die cut machine for these tiny dies. I'm a big fan of that, really I'm a big fan of that. Okay, I've, I, and again, like I say, you're, this, when you experiment with these things, you can find your new favourite technique, and this is now my new favourite thing. <laughs> okay, so here are the two pieces that we die cut. And I'm so glad that I experimented with this because, like I say, I think when you try something like this, you could find your new favourite technique. And these little vellum um, die cuts are my new favourite thing. So we've got the one that's got the texture, which is really sweet. Or we've got the just the, the plain one there. And I think I'm kind of tempted to just go with that plain one. Um, or I could layer the two together, so one behind the, the other. But I like the fact that they're a bit more see-through, so I'm going to save the one that's got the texture. Save that one for later. Adorable. Now, the, the challenge that we've got is how do we stick our vellum to, um, to our piece here, because we're obviously going to be, um, if we wanted a little bit of dimension, we're going to struggle because um, you're going to see it. And I think even if I use some, um, uh, what's the, what's it called, the dimensional glue, um, silicon glue, I think you will see that when it dries. So um, we may not be able to add any dimension to that but we'll see. Um, I also want to add a little bit of string. So to add a bit of string, I'm going to use some twine. 
now I think I've got some twine actually behind me here I do so this is a really good piece because it sort of matches um, with the background but isn't going to take away from our Bunny here, or we could go with a piece of blue. So, with me, we have a little box here of twine. that is going to match. Oh, it's a little bit the wrong shade of blue, unfortunately. We do have a little bit of pink. We've got the pale pink and we've got the bright pink. I'll try a bit of the bright pink. We don't need a lot. I'm just going to snip So my my thoughts are I'm going to go with this and I'm actually going to unravel this so that I'm only using the darker brown bit okay. and I'm going to use some of my multimedia mats and I'm going to get a little bit of scrap. I might use this little bit of vellum here. Squeeze some of this on here, hopefully. Hopefully it's not got part of the rug. There we go. Squeeze some of that onto there and then I'm going to rub my bit of twine through that multimedia mat and I'm going to smudge it and just work it into there. What that will do is it makes it nice and straight and stay, just stay in one place. Um, I can also use this to stick it, I think, to the back of here. So again, I'm just going to Squeeze a tiny bit out if I can. There we go. And then pop that into there. And that should stick in place. So cute. Okay. So now we've got our little little vellum balloon, which is adorable which is then going to sit in the paws of our little, little bunny there. Cute, very, very cute. So I'm not going to trim that down until I know quite where everything's going to sit. Let's have a little tidy up here because the last, the last element to pop together is our sentiment. Um, So my sub sentiment that I'm going to use is um, I miss you. I think that's kind of cute. Um, so I do have a little scrap of cardstock here, but I don't know whether it might be a little bit too narrow for my sentiment. So let's grab 
this is another scrap of cardstock. Never throw away your scraps. Um, that is the theme of, of today is don't throw away your scraps. So I'm going to heat set this, I think, with some embossing ink. So I'm going to add a little bit of anti-static into here. Grab my embossing ink into my sentiment. Put that down nice and firmly, but don't don't squish too hard. And then let's grab a bit of scratch paper and my embossing powder. This is super fine white, bright white embossing powder. So that looks pretty good. Just giving it a little tap to make sure that um, we haven't got any of that powder on our background. Grab my heat gun. Okay. I absolutely love heat embossing. It's something that I will just never ever get fed up of, I don't think. So I'm going to just wipe over that with um, my mag fiber cloth just to make sure that that is um, bright and all getting anti static powders off there. I've got one of my fishtail banner dies here. And I'm thinking, oh, do I use that to add my sentiment? So I'm just going to use it to cut it out. We don't have to use the fishtail element of it. We can trim that down. But this is going to mean that I get a nice, even cut, which um, if I'm just trimming, I'm probably not going to get. So um, using a die makes it so much easier. So let's pop that in there. Oh, come on. In you go. <laughs> and run that through. This is such a bright and cheerful duo of cards. I absolutely love it. I um I don't know if you're the same but at the moment it's so grey outside and we're barely leaving the house. I'm like a little hermit because it's so cold out there. I don't want to be out in it. So, um, so yeah, having such a lovely, bright and cheerful card is definitely making me feel so much better. So we've got, I miss you there. So we could keep the little fish tail on one end and cut it straight at this end, which might look very cute, I think. So... Let's start putting this together. First of all, I'm going to add my paper, patterned paper, to my first layer. So, pop that in there. Uh, this is my A2 card piece, so I'm going to add some dimension to this with um, some of my extra wide foam tape. So, oh, flip that over and grab my scissors. strips 
off there. Now this will create a really nice, robust background. You could also use um, some fun foam cut with your um, layering dies to the same size and use that. Save on some of your, your adhesive that way. Put some there, that's cute. And then I think we do. I think I'll do this one flat onto here. And then I'm just going to add some foam to the back of this. Some lovely dimensional card again. So let me just double check where my sentiment is going to go at the bottom here. So that's going to go at the bottom there, and then that wants to go about there. And my sentiment, I might as well add this while we're at it. So a bit of glue to add, I think, onto the glue. A bit of glue. There. And the tittle, and then I'm going to add some foam to the back of this. I'm using the dots to help me <laughs> get that straight. And then this little guy, we've got the I miss you here, haven't we? So I'm going to mark with a pencil just where I want to put that down. Just there. And then just snip that off the edge. Bring it there. A little bit more of this in the pencil mark, and then I think I am going to sit it against here, but I need a little bit of um, a bit of support just there. So I've got a little bit of tape here, a little bit of foam tape, and I'm going to pop that under here at this end. Move it a little bit too large, maybe. It's sticking to my fingers now. Look, that's just going to sit on the end, and then the rest can have a bit of glue. Pop all that down. really nicely on there and then my little bunny again I'm going to pop him up on some tape where am I because we can't pop up his little
to have any dimensional uh, grid. Let me look in. Okay, so I have here in my possession a little box of tools. <laughs> I've got all kinds of things in here. Um, but one of the what I'm actually looking for is this silicon adhesive which dries clear. Now there's every every likelihood that this is no longer working because I don't think I've used this type of um, adhesive for forever. But I'm willing to give it a try. So let's pop a bit of adhesive on the back of our little bunny here. Let's get him stuck on first and then we can um, see what happens with with the glue situation if not we will come up with another solution I'm sure so I'm just trimming down some little bits of fan tape here just to add a little bit of support to the bunny in various spots um, I do want his little paws to be quite solid because that's what we're going to be sticking the ribbon to, uh, the balloon to. So here. I don't know if you've noticed but I do find it so much easier to remove the backing off this fan tape than I do off most others which is a great little design feature accidental design feature. I would love to say that we planned it that way but we would be fibbing. Right, I'm just I want to see a little bit of that blue around him and obviously I want the blue itself to kind of sit in the middle here. Hmm, I feel like maybe he should have been a bit further along but maybe not. See if I can poke him up. Without the other thing with this foam tape is that it, it does stick really well once it's down. So we may not get him back up again without destroying the card. But a little bit of gentle pressure. Destroyed it. Look, that's the only danger because we're using um, distress oxide um, ink. But I'm going to be covering that bit up because that's going to go in the middle much better now. That's better. I much prefer that position. Okay, so now. This needs to kind of curl this way. So let's have a look, see if our. Uh, oh, this is one that's not been opened. Well, if the um, worst comes to the worst, we do have one that has not been opened, so that's good news. But I would rather use one that has been opened. So I have got a little. Um, little stick here which we use to help and you can see how I mean that does look a bit of a it's got a bit of colour to it but that might be the age of the glue and we'll add it to the back of there and you can see that it is quite thick that's the point is that it will give a bit of dimension and then it can sit where you pop it. So if you need a bit more dimension, you can add a bit more. So this is quite yellowy. I think that might be the age of the glue. So, but don't worry. 
I have not lost. I'm going to use, uh, yeah, I will use a little bit of Dabba Dabba. And just pull it there to then add our string. Leave that. Now, when you close this up, I don't know if you've got these at home, but when you close it up, you're meant to squeeze a little bit out and then add your lid, and that is meant to prevent it from drying out. And as you can see, mine hasn't dried out, although it does appear to have lost a bit of its clarity, but it works. So let's see how that. That winds up. I'm just going to wipe the end of that with just a bit of paper. So I just need to let that dry a little bit and then I can just snip off that tail end. There we go. Okay, so we're getting there now. This is looking so cute. Okay, so the final final touch really is to add a little bit of um, jelly roll pen. And I'm going to go with this one here. And I'm going to start with my bunny and I'm going to add some highlights, some little whisker marks highlights on his feet some little stripes that are a bit like um, adding um, I suppose uh, fur <laughs> goodness me and then on our hearts here I just think it's really sweet to add a few little highlights here just it just makes it look very graphic and just makes it pop a little bit I really enjoy adding these highlights to the um, the colored card I'm going to add a few more there. And there. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I really love that. Um, I really want to add a bit to this. It's not fully dry yet, but I'm just going to hold on to it and just add a little bit to that heart there as well which I think looks really cute so that does need to dry I can see that little tiny piece um, where we've popped the um, the glue so I'm gonna see how that dries the um, the answer to that really is you could add a little gem to that you could add another tiny heart um, I'm sure that I've got another heart somewhere in my stash that I could just pop over the over the front of that um, to cover that up um, I don't think anybody is really too bothered if I'm honest because it looks so adorable just as it is so we've now got those two lovely retro colored cards that make a really sweet set um and i just think they're so fun to make i hope that you enjoyed that guys i really hope that you enjoyed today's um card making um and the project that i came up with it would be great if you could like and subscribe to the channel because that really helps us um we you know um be seen by other people who might enjoy what we do um and i'll be back again for um another live crafting session on every friday at 4 p.m and i'll see you for some more videos really soon thanks so much guys bye now bye